Welcome back to the Global Insight Channel. We witnessed a small group of individuals circling the holiest site of Islam in Mecca. Jesus strongly warned against worshipping a fallen angel spirit and the associated imagery. His caution was directed towards the worship of a false god rather than himself. This fallen angel is referred to as the beast in the book of Revelation, authored by John. The Bible provides significant information to identify the beast, indicating its origin in Babylon and its intention to deceive many people. This beast spirit collaborates with another fallen angel named Satan. The Bible mentions that a false prophet creates an image to pay homage to the beast. It is commonly known among Muslims that the prophet Muhammad included the black stone in the Kaaba, located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. This image is what Jesus cautioned against, as the Kaaba is believed to be the dwelling place of the beast's spirit. During the reign of the Babylonian Empire, the spirit of the beast was worshipped on earth, but it ceased its activities when confined to the spiritual dungeon known as the Abyss after Babylon's destruction. However, according to biblical prophecy, the beast will emerge from the Abyss and resume its activities, but it can only be destroyed upon the return of Jesus. This message emphasizes the reality taught by Jesus. According to the Bible, Jesus is the divine Son of God, while Islamic belief considers him a prophet, not God. The Bible teaches that Jesus was crucified for our sins and rose from the dead on the third day, contradicting the belief held by Muslims. The Bible asserts that salvation and eternal life can only be attained through Jesus, challenging the Quran's teachings. Due to these and other inconsistencies, it is highly unlikely that the Quran is accurate. Presently, there is a concern that former Christians are being indoctrinated to worship the beast in the Kaaba through public education. The Bible stands as the only accurate source of information, and Jesus' warnings about the beast should be taken seriously. By accepting the authentic words of Jesus, one can find salvation. The beast that was seen once existed, but no longer does. It will emerge from the abyss before its ultimate destruction. Those whose names are not recorded in the Book of Life will be astonished when they witness the beast for the first time. According to the biblical prophecy revealed by John in 95 AD, the beast had previously held power on earth but was confined to the abyss by God, rendering it powerless. However, Jesus declared that the beast will be released from the pit in the future, acquiring immense power granted by Satan. The abyss, also known as Shal, is the spiritual world where souls and fallen angels are kept until the Day of Judgment. The Bible frequently references Babylon, indicating that the beast originates from there. The beast is a demonic entity, and its authority on earth began when it was released from the abyss, having previously been imprisoned and ceased to exist while in confinement. Another angel was captured, followed by the proclamation Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. This symbolizes that Babylon, known as the mother of prostitutes and abominations, was responsible for leading all nations into her intoxicating adulteries. In 586 before Christ, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon laid siege to Jerusalem, resulting in the destruction of Solomon's temple and the plundering of its contents. The Israelites were then taken captive by the Babylonians and held captive for 70 years. The prophet Isaiah describes a prophecy in chapter 14 Aunt, of the book, of Isaiah, which was fulfilled in 539 before Christ, when Cyrus the Great of Persia conquered Babylon and defeated its inhabitants. This prophecy depicts the fall of Babylon and the dispatching of a demonic fallen angel by God to Sheol. Isaiah characterizes this fallen angel with the words, How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been reduced to the ground, you who have been responsible for weakening the nations. Despite the fallen angel's desire to ascend to heaven, elevate his throne above the stars of God, and sit on the mount of the assembly in the depths of the north, he will be thrown down to Sheol, the depths of the pit. The prophet Habakkuk also mentions this Babylonian demon, referring to him as the haughty one. According to Habakkuk, the souls of the proud are not right within them, while the souls of the righteous will live by their faith. Similar to the relationship between Sheol and death, the arrogant person is led astray by alcohol, always desiring more and never being satisfied. The proud person also gathers all nations and peoples of the world. In the Bible, the Babylonian devil is called Baal in both Hebrew and Aramaic languages. 
Baal is more than just a stone idol, as Jeremiah states that God punishes him by making him spit out what he has ingested. Jeremiah proclaims, I will punish Baal in Babylon and make him spit out what he has swallowed. The nations will no longer flock to him, and the wall of Babylon will collapse. It is important to note that the Babylonian demon, trapped in Sheol during the time of the Apostle John in 95 AD, had no authority on earth. This is why John emphasizes in the ninth chapter of Revelation that it is not yet time for the Babylonian demon to appear. The angel resembling a star descended to earth and was granted permission to open the abyss. Baal was able to emerge from the abyss and ascend to his throne within the Kaaba. As a result, smoke emerged from the discharge of numerous demons. The false gospel of the Quran was brought to Muhammad by one of these demonic spirits, claiming to have revealed themselves to him. Between the years 610 and 632, an occurrence took place during which Muhammad repeatedly received visitations from a demonic spirit who identified themselves as Gabriel. The fifth angel blew his trumpet, and a fallen star from heaven was visible to those observing. When this star opened the door to the abyss, smoke rose from it like smoke from a massive furnace. This star possessed the key to the abyss, and the smoke that emerged cast a shadow over the sun and the sky. Locusts descended upon the earth with a force comparable to that of scorpions. Satan, the dragon, granted the beast significant power and his throne. The seeming fatal wound to one of the beast's heads is healed through the release of the Babylonian demon, leading to this healing. John refers to this prophecy in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. While the dragon stood on the ocean shore, a beast with seven heads and ten horns, each bearing a sacrilegious name, emerged from the water. The beast had feet like a bear and a mouth like a lion, but it was not a leopard. The dragon granted the beast its power, throne, and great authority. Muslims are obligated to perform five daily prayers, which do not necessarily have to be conducted in a mosque. These prayers are directed toward the Kaaba, a sacred structure believed to house the black stone and represent God's dwelling place. It's important to note that this prayer is not directed towards Jesus but towards the Kaaba. However, it would be inaccurate to label the Kaaba as evil. Even before Muhammad, the prophet Zechariah made a prophecy about its significance. The Kaaba is a significant structure not associated with any devilish presence or depravity. There is no scriptural evidence supporting the notion that a Babylonian demon resides within the Kaaba. The Bible references the dragon as a symbol of Satan and the beast, as a spirit associated with the devil. However, it's crucial to understand that these entities are not worshipped in isolation. The Bible states that when the beast recovers from a deadly wound, people will worship both the dragon and the beast. This may be perplexing to non-believers but aligns with prophecies found in the Bible. In the Islamic religion, the dragon, known as Satan, is revered as the deity Allah in the Quran. According to Quranic teachings, praying to Allah is equivalent to worshipping the dragon. However, the Quran cannot be considered true as it denies Jesus as the Son of God. Additionally, the Islamic Allah contradicts the Quran itself, making it impossible for him to be the true God. Satan desires to assume the role of God and deceive Muhammad into worshipping him. Seeking assistance from Allah through prayer and patience is recommended, especially for those who humbly submit to Allah. Worshipping the beast is attributed to individuals who bow down, direct their prayers, and make pilgrimages to the black stone within the Kaaba. The Quran instructs believers to face the Kaaba when worshipping Allah, and thus believers are advised to turn their faces towards the Kaaba during the month of May, regardless of their location. People who possess scripture are aware that it is the truth from their Lord, and Allah is aware of their actions. In response to the dual worship, hardline Muslim organizations have launched attacks against the black stone within the Kaaba, believing it to be the beast. A group of armed individuals, who identified as Muslim terrorists, managed to seize control of the Kaaba for several weeks in 1979. This incident occurred because some people traveled to Mecca with the intention of touching the stones rather than seeking a connection with Allah. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria AESIS, expressed a desire to execute those who worship stones in Mecca and destroy the Kaaba. In the past, there have been multiple ballistic missile strikes launched by Muslims in Yemen towards the Kaaba in Mecca, with the goal of destroying it. However, 
The Kaaba is currently protected from these missile attacks by the use of Patriot missiles deployed by the United States. According to the Bible, the beast, a monstrous entity residing in the abyss, represents one of the seven kingdoms ruled by demonic spiritual forces. This beast sits in a city situated on seven hills. Mecca, located in Saudi Arabia, is also built on seven hills. In this case, a wise and discerning mind is necessary to understand the symbolism. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills on which the woman sits, symbolizing seven different rulers. Five of these rulers have already fallen, one is currently in power, and the seventh is yet to come. However, the seventh ruler will only remain in power for a short period of time before being destroyed. The eighth ruler, who is part of the seven, will also face destruction. Kingdoms such as Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome are mentioned as being ruled by divine beings. During John's time, Rome was the ruling kingdom, succeeded by the seventh ruler known as Abaddon, who was the ruler of demons released from the abyss. The Bible states that this demonic entity's reign lasted only five months. The Bible also predicts that the eighth ruler would be the Babylonian devil emerging from the abyss. This devil is connected to the previous seven rulers and is under the authority of the angel of the abyss referred to as Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek, both meaning destroyer. The Quran acknowledges that no one, including Muhammad, can determine their ultimate fate in this life, reflecting an essential belief in Islam. Muhammad expressed uncertainty about the afterlife and the destinies of himself and others. In contrast, the Bible reveals Muhammad's destiny, stating that the false prophet and the demonic beast will be thrown into the lake of fire when Jesus returns. Those who have taken the mark of the beast and worshipped its image will also face punishment. Non-believers mistakenly worship both the dragon and the demonic beast when they bow and pray in front of the black stone of the Kaaba, following what they believe to be a divine order from the Quran. The Bible warns about Islam and its practices centuries before they were incorporated into Islamic worship. It clearly states that anyone who accepts the Shahada or worships and prays towards the image of the Kaaba will be denied entry into heaven. Their suffering will continue, and they will find no relief, regardless of the time of day. This applies not only to those who worship the beast and its image, but also to those who bear the mark of the beast's name. The Bible emphasizes that Jesus is the Son of God, who took on the punishment for our sins through his crucifixion and resurrection. Worship and prayer directed towards the beast and its image are discouraged by this message. We pray for every Muslim who accepts the mark and worships the image, that they may come to know the truth about Jesus, who is not just a prophet, but the Son of God who triumphantly rose from the dead. We eagerly await the return of Jesus in the near future. Thank you for watching. May God bless you.